Which code's better, Cursor AI or Chat GBT? Let's put these head to head and see which one actually will help you code better. Now, before I get that comment sent, Corbin, you can actually just use the Chat GBT model within Cursor AI. No, you can't. Oh, you're talking about these models? Yeah, they're not the same. Yeah, in theory, you could enable GBT4 or GBT40 and all these different models, but you're not really getting the meat of where ChatGPT gives its best code. It's not gonna be in this context. Therefore, we need to ask ourselves, which one codes better? It's gonna be ChatGPT or it's gonna be Cursor AI. And anyone that's used artificial intelligence, specifically in the context of API endpoints, has come to the understanding now, through experience, that the way we conversate with ChatGPT in just its ChatGPT UI, and the way we conversate it in an API endpoint, and the way we conversate it within automation software are all entirely different ways. I'm not saying this to sound like a conspiracy theory, but if you genuinely have used this in the past two years, you will soon do realize that the prompts we put in, if I put the exact same prompt into this UI, API, and a Zapier automation, the output's gonna be different, different, and different. This is just how it is. Some of y'all right now might be like, Corbin, what even is Cursor AI? Cursor AI is, think of it like a VS code. If like, I mean, this looks very similar to VS code, but with artificial intelligence integrated. So you can do a very much like interactive stuff within the actual code file itself. For example, I can make it write specific code, command K, generate another button saying hello, hit submit. It'll look at the code for context and it'll add that button. I right? command save here, come over here, we got another button. Now, if you want to see a video showing you how to set up your first project within Cursor AI that's very specific to you, it's not this the trainer one. That's why it's called Corn Beef Hashier. Check out that video right there. This is a major utility use case of Cursor AI. On top of that, I think it's a great education tool in the sense of Command L. You can actually ask specific questions to the code that you highlighted. I've talked about this. I've gone over this, but let's get down to the meat here. Which one's better at coding? I may be very biased in what I'm about to say right now, so go ahead and leave that comment. But I personally think from my experience, what's your experience, Corbin? I'm building out a full stack AI application, bumpups.com, check it out, backed by Google. My experience tells me that ChatGPT is better. And let me give you the major reasons why I am veering towards ChatGPT in the context of using an AI code editor. Reason number one, which may sound very ironic, it's separate. I don't like it when I use a platform, especially like Cursor AI, even if it says if you choose the private, they won't look at your code. Do you believe it? Even if you believe it, having a artificial intelligence integrated directly into your project here has some drawbacks. That goes over reasoning number one, in the sense of I don't really like it when artificial intelligence tools are integrated directly into my directory. So maybe that's a personal thing. You're like, all right, Corbin, I don't really care. I'll let it slide. I'll have Cursor AI be my main shtick. My second thing is that the fact that this doesn't have the ability to do custom instructions. Now their version of custom instructions is very much so you actually just provide all the relevant code that you wanna ask a question about, and you can go as far as ask questions about multiple files. This isn't bad. But the issue with this is that there is no global custom instructions, e.g. what backend am I using? Firebase, Google Cloud, AWS. What languages am I using? Python in the backend, Node.js in the front end. What is my directory? What is my terminal directory that I can just reference in any type of Git command if I have a question about Git commands or Firebase commands? Like there isn't really a good global custom instructions. As of now, there might be one in the future for Cursor AI. Now, if you wanna see the power of custom instructions and if you don't even know what I'm talking about, you come into your profile here, you hit customize ChatGPT. It's laser in chats, so you get more fine-tuned chats that are way better on the outputs that you receive. If you want a whole video on that, check it out right there. I'll show you how to build out your own custom instructions for ChatGPT in this specific context of coding. First major drawback is that we can't add images here. This is a very specific drawback in the context of coding out front ends. Due to the fact that if you screenshot an element within your front end that's just having issues, you want to give the AI model more context, this is an amazing way to get faster outputs. Very specifically, faster outputs that are very specific to the issue you're having in your front-end development. When using something like this, we can't drag in an image. We can't give ourselves the ability to really get more intuitive with our chat outputs. I'm realizing that I'm coming off like I'm really bashing Cursor AI. I, I like Cursor AI, don't worry. I think it's awesome. I think it's cooler in the sense of an education tool, not a tool you use to build out a full-blown software product. Give me some backlash there is what it is. The next drawback is very much a double-edged sword. If you're very inexperienced in coding and you had to choose between the two, I would say bite the bullet and starve chat GBT. Obviously make your custom instructions, but this is gonna train you more to understand more fundamental stuff when it comes to software development. If you just jump into Cursor AI, this is for people that have little to no experience. If you just jump into this, Think of it more like an educational sandbox as there's a lot of fundamental formatting and ways you structure projects that just isn't clear to a user that hasn't coded before. Like if you build out a full application in just the app.js, you have an issue there. Like all the CSS, all the J6, all the different components are in one file. That's not how you do it. 
So then the other side of that is that if you actually are a very strong developer and you've coded a ton in the past, this isn't horrible. This definitely isn't a bad idea as you'll be able to gut check more, but there is some type of level of disconnecting you want during the coding process, especially because of the fact that when you code using cursor AI and you have it change stuff within the underlying file, it presents it more like a git commit. Like the idea is this, add a title saying, what's up? So then if you have like a 500 line code file, which is not even that much in reality when you build out software, that little like white cursor thing that you see go down is gonna go down the entire file. So you're adding a ton of latency between commits, between everything, your entire workflow, just for you to add maybe a couple lines. Furthermore, if it like deletes part of the code, it will you know show like a red UI. Is this the best? I would say probably not. I would say that, yeah, in theory, you could probably get to an endpoint that you want. If this is your experience in coding, you could probably get to the endpoint you want. It's going to take longer, especially if you're building out applications where, I mean, one of like a file could be over a thousand lines of code, even with refactoring. Like, do you really want to go down the route where if you want to change something very specific, I guess you could highlight the specific part of the code instead of command a -ing the entire thing. That's possible. But even then, there's just like a latency disconnect that can occur if you get too comfortable with this kind of UI. So my opinion is this. And I already know people are going to be tripping in the comments, so don't fall. My opinion is I think using artificial intelligence as a code helper is very advantageous, but I think keeping it disconnected is even more advantageous. This really depends on your use case. This really depends on how you are approaching your software development of building out a full-blown application. I just think a tool like Cursor AI is amazing if you're a new beginner and you just want to play around, see what's up. But if you like actually want to build out a full-blown application, Part of the things that Cursor AI makes easy, you actually want it to be hard so you actually learn how to do it for software applications. So that means you find yourself, rather than getting one nice little input, one nice little output in Cursor AI, which makes it super easy, you find yourself in more chat-like conversations with ChatGBT, more back and forth. And how do we learn? We learn typically through conversation and asking a question getting an answer. Oh, that's the answer. Let me dive a little bit further into that, asking another question. That kind of interaction can kind of occur on Cursor AI, but not to the level of ChatGPT. Regardless, what do y'all think? I already know I'm going to get some hate for this one. <laughs> Leave it. You know what we call that? We call that free engagement. Leave the comment, please. And I'll see you in the next video. These videos are based off your clicks and the way you've been engaging with social media. That's my face. Check out those videos if they look good. Bottom one doesn't look that bad. And I'll see you in the next video.